Hello, welcome to our mini documentary. Our topic will be the Sultan during the Mamluk period, a critical analysis. Enjoy. Firstly, we will discuss who were the Mamluks. Where did they come from? Mamluk history is divided into two periods based on different dynastic lines. The Babri Mamluks of Kipchak Turkic origin from southern Russia, named after the location of their barracks on the Nile, and the Burji Mamluks of Caucasian Circassian origin, who recorded in the citadel. The Kipchak Turks were well known for their love of horse archery and of warfare. To quote the historian Al Jahiz, they have become in warfare what the Greeks are in philosophy. After receiving instruction in Arabic, the fundamentals of Islam, and the art of warfare, slaves in the royal barracks were manumitted and given responsibilities in the Mamluk hierarchy. The Mamluks, an elite core of Turkish military slaves, were to become the dominant force in Egyptian and Middle Eastern politics for three centuries. Their lands would extend from their base in Cairo, Egypt, to the borders of the Levant and Iraq. the Mamluks come into power, by the time the Mamluks begin to rise to the ranks, it was evident from their rules that several drastic changes had occurred within the political institution in the Muslim world. The Arabs no longer held the highest authority in these Muslim states. After the death of the last great Ayyubid prince, Salih Ayyubid, succession dispute occurred. Through a series of political conflicts and an easy alliance with rival factions, Bebas became the first Bahri Sultan. The Bahri dynasty will last from 1250 to 1382. This marked the beginning of the decline of the Mamluks. They would be succeeded by the Burji dynasty. which will last from 1382 to 1517, with the death of Tuman Bey II. The Mamluk Sultan represented two positions symbolically. Firstly, he originally came from an artificially created elite court, and thus he represented the first among equals among the Amirs. Secondly, he functioned as the traditional Islamic autocratic ruler of the Muslim subjects. The Baris would go on to establish a ceremonial caliph which would become a common feature during Mamluk period. While the Sultan or sometimes the Emirs during the Abori Kalawudi period held real absolute executive power. The Sultan ruled in an authoritarian fashion. However, during the Caliph of the Arab Abbasid Caliph in Cairo, Al Mustaq in Billah, he became the first Caliph to also temporarily hold the position of Mamluk Sultanate during the Burji dynasty. The Sultan delegated powers to provincial governance called Naib as Sultana. The second in power during the Sultanate was the most senior, he called Senior Naib. Though these Naibs were of Mamluk origin, were engaged in formal military training, they were in fact men of high culture and education who engaged in the study of Islamic law and history. As the Mamluk came from a Turkish tribes known for their military tactics and horse archery. So, let's talk about the institutions under the Sultan. As it would become commonplace through the Mamluk Sultanate, the Sultan began to change institutions of Egypt to fit his needs. The Sultans during the Mamluk period would also alter the judiciary which affected the power of the Qadis and the fiscal systems, the Iktas, 
to control the independence of the royal Mamluks and also the emir's power. For instance, during the reign of Baybars, he established codiship for the three other major mashab to reduce the power of the established Shafi'i Qadi in Cairo. Al Nasir weakened the Iqtah system to make emirs and royal Mamluks more dependent on him. Moving to international relations and trade. Relations between the Mongols and Mamluks were initially sour as the head engaged in several battles including the famous battle of Ain Janu in 1260 between Baybars and Kutus against the Kitbuka. This battle led to the Mongols' advance being permanently halted before entering Africa and they were pushed back into Iran. However, relations improve with the Mongols as they begin to convert into Islam. The Mamluks also traded a lot with neighboring Muslim states, such as the Rasulids in Yaman as well as Italian city, states such as the Genoa. So we will continue to selection and succession process. The Mamluks became the political elite and as such, succession typically came from their ranks. Their rule and succession was characterized by a meritocracy though this was not always the case. Succession also occurred through violent coup, coup or assassinations. Sultans who were previously in power also tried to install a dynastic or hereditary succession though this rarely successful during the Bahri dynasty and completely failed during the Burji dynasty as the Kersgazian focused less on hereditary succession than the Kipchaks. The son of Baibar, Baraka was only a sultan for two years before he was abdicated by Saab Ad-Din al Kalawun. Anasi Muhammad held their intermittent reign between 1293 to 1340. His Amir, such as Kitabuga, temporarily took executive power from him during his early reigns. In conclusion, why did the seemingly unstable and competitive Mamluk political system survive for so long? Rational self-interest was the primary motive. Although succession was violent at times, the actors were rational enough to preserve, rather than destroy, the existing institutions. Perhaps the military slave upbringing of the Mamluks themselves affected the political system. However, the Mamluk Sultanate in Egypt eventually faltered due to the faulty political structure, predictable and easily exploited methods for succession, foreign invasions, lack of military technological progress, and of course, the Black Death or the bubonic plague. Furthermore, the violent political struggles damaged the rulership, and there was no continuity in state policies during each reign. They were eventually replaced by the Ottomans, though the Mamluks continued to exercise some political influence during the Ottoman Empire. However, the Mamluks left a legacy 
where Egypt and Cairo in particular became the economic and cultural and artistic centers of the Arab Islamic world.